Welcome to our virtual um, Laura One Wall of Fame presentation session. I'm Andres and I'm a project engineer at Comtag and today I will, uh, on my session I will present you a product we develop for our customers and partners at tracker.ch. The product I'm going to show you today is uh, the LPN tracker. As the name already says, it's, it's, a, it's a tracker device, but it's not only just any tracker device, it's a heavy duty IP67 tracking device. I will explain to you today how to use it and how to connect it to the things uh, enterprise tech. But before doing that, I will show you where to use it for, where not to use it for, and some technical specs. So to start again, this is the LPN tracker. Um, it's a GPS tracking device. It has a long lasting battery inside. It's heavy duty, as I said before, IP67 custom housing and has an industrial design. It also integrates an accelerometer and a microphone to uh, allow us to do some, some smart GPS triggering, uh, which is then used already in, in the, which is used in the different modes the device supports. It also has a lock capability of 1,500 positions. This device was made for three main usages or use cases, as you, as you can call it. First of, the, first of them is called start-stop positioning of vehicles, machines, and big objects the so-called mode one. In this mode, we can detect the start and stop of uh, moving objects, but only the start and stop. Now the second mode, it's actually kind of weird, it's called mode three, but I, have it, I explain you afterwards why I have it this way. Uh, this is called the tracking and positioning of vehicles, machines, or big objects. In this mode, we not only, not only have the start and stop positioning, but we also have the positions in between the start and stop at a certain GPS interval that can be set by the user over the air. And the third mode, which is also a really interesting mode where you probably ask yourself why we add a microphone to this device. So here's where it comes. And it's called the machine hour counting mode. In this mode, we're able to count uh, the, the, the working hours of a machine by detecting a specific profile of motion and sound of a certain machine. For example, a motor of a, of a big truck or something like that. It's uh, made to use in industrial settings and rough environments, as I said before. Here I have an example of mode one, more or less how it looks like, so you can compare, you can have an idea of what the difference between mode one and mode three, mode three are. So the difference, main difference is the, that we only see in the card, we only see start and stop. We see nothing else. In this case, uh, we had the device mounted on a car which drove from point A to B, and as you can see on the car, there's only one, there's only two points A and B. And compared to the mode three, you see that we also have the start and stop points as uh, before, but we have a, a bunch of positions in between. These positions were the ones that the device was actualizing as it was driving, as it was in motion. There's also this option with the log I told you, and this is a really cool option if you, for example, get out of coverage. In that case, the device uh, saves this information into a log, and once the coverage is back, back and running, uh, it dumps all this data to the cloud. In this case, you can see a friend of ours here at the company went to Italy for some vacations, and you just can see the whole <laughs> start stop that he did on that way. And uh, just so you have an idea where to install the device in mode two, which would be machine counting hours. And uh, I have two pictures here where you can see where, I, where we installed it. We installed it in big uh, construction machines, construction vehicles close to the motor. So like that, we could detect uh, the, the motion, the vibration and the sound profile of the motor. And uh, with these two parameters, we could detect if the, if the device or the vehicle was running or not. Now, what not to use it for, here are some things I wrote down, maybe you already kind of got it. It's not really meant to use for route tracking. Uh, what I mean by, by this is, I mean, you can say, okay, mode 3 was kind of like route tracking, but what I mean by saying this is that it's not meant to really use it on a fast update ratio kind of application. So if you really need a fast update ratio on the, on the position, the actual positioning of the device, this is not probably your best choice. And it's also not really uh, meant to, to, use it in, to use it in live tracking applications. So if you really want to have live information of your device, it's not the right choice to go for. Uh, as you can see, the device is not uh, 
not really small. So tracking of small dynamic objects is also something what's not really an application or a usage of this device. And obviously, last but not least, indoor location. Now I'll show you some, some other specs of, the, of our device. And right now we support the EU frequency. More frequencies are to come. And uh, right now we run it with the LoRa 1 protocol 1.02. And as I said before, long battery life, IP67. It has a replaceable battery inside of 7.4 amper hours. So in case after some years, after, I don't know, three years or something like that, if you, if you happen to not have any battery anymore, you can just actually open the device and replace the battery without a problem. As I said before, we got an accelerometer and a, mic and a microphone on board, and also this lock with a capacity for 1,500 positions. Now I'm going to show you how to add the device to the Things Enterprise tag. But before doing that, I just forgot something I wanted to show you again, the page of Tracker.com. Here you can find more information about our device. It's obviously LoRaWAN certified and it's also Swisscom IoT qualified. And here you can find more technical data, like for example the size and weight of it, and just more information that we probably missed during the presentation you can find here. And as I said before, if you just need to get more info about the device, just please don't hesitate to contact us at, at contact.ch or just contact the tracker directly, however you want. We're always happy to help you. Now back to the things uh, enterprise stack. You see here, this is my account. I already created an application called LoRaWAN Virtual Wall of Fame. And now I'm going to add a device to it. Um, just going to call VM Tracker. Um, as I said on, as I said before, we got a LoRaWAN 1.0.2. So I'm going to have to choose here the European frequency, as I said before, and uh, the the joining information usually you get from the from the distributor or from us, so uh, from us uh, from us from the producer. So I'm gonna. I already have this information. I'm just gonna add it to the platform. I'm also gonna add the app key. I got a app key, dev EUI and join EUI slash app EUI. When I have this all in, I can just create the device and this should be up and running. Usually when you get the device, the first time it's going to be turned off in low power mode. And uh, to be able to activate it, there is a magnetic switch in the device that is located uh, right below this uh, point on the housing. So when you want to activate the device, uh, you just have to go with a magnet and it should start uh, running. That's what we're going to try now. Just going to get a magnet and going to try to activate the device and see what happens. As you can see, we already got a, a join request, a join accept, and once this happened, uh, messages are gonna start uh, coming. And usually whenever the device is started, the first message is a, is a information message that shows the firmware version it's running on. And afterwards you get a configuration message where you see um, how the device is configured, in which mode, which parameters are activated for the motion detection and everything. And uh, once this is also done, the device uh, is, starts running and uh, you can get messages from the application. So usually whenever it starts running, it just starts for the first, waits for the first start. And whenever this happens, a GPS fetching is going to be started. When this happens, uh, after this is finished, usually it takes a little bit a longer time. The first time this is finished, uh, the positioning is going to be sent to the to the to the server, and that's how the system usually works. And whenever it stops again, it's going to send back a message that it has stopped. Uh, screw that. I do not have. I didn't have time to add a a for a parser for this uh, device. But uh, we have the whole payload description online. So if you can, if you wanna if you wanna get some more information about payload, just please contact us. There are different kind of messages, different IDs. So it's 
it's fairly complex, but once 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 it is implemented, it's pretty straightforward, and you can get visualizations as the ones I showed you on the on the presentation before. It's the LPN tracker connected to the thing stack. Uh, so that was all from my side. I hope you enjoyed our session and could learn something about our, our device. If you need some information about it, just uh, please don't hesitate to contact us at contact.ch or our partners at tracker.com. You can also see now my, my, my personal content, email and, tele and uh, phone number if you want to give, give us a call. Just go ahead and, and we can talk about it. Thanks. Have a nice one.